right. Welcome everyone. I see people are logging in straight from Tarmax and everything. This is the very first dig for so digital forensics series that we're doing here on YouTube live. And I had to pick one of my favorites, Alexis to be live with me for the first one. Um, I'm Heather Mahalik here with celebrate and we want to start this new series for you where we're doing different types of interviews myself jared barnhart and paul lawrence will be interviewing people that we choose that you choose that the community chooses for us to just share some information and um, we want this to be approximately 15 minutes or so i think alex and i could talk forever so we will <laughs> eventually cut it off but we do have a live chat. So if you have questions and there's time, please type them in. Um, if not, maybe we'll do some kind of follow-up blogs or something on Discord. We don't know. This is the first time. So Alexis, welcome to the show. Um, you are a man of many names. Um, you'll hear me call him Briggs, Alexis, Alex, all of the things. But thank you for joining us. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure. Um, Honor to be the first guest and, and to be with you. What a treat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to dive right in because we don't have a ton of time. Um, first and foremost, if you're not aware, Alexis is the mastermind, as I like to say, behind all of the leaps. And if you don't know what the leaps are, you are missing out. So you need to Google Alexis Bergoni right away and look up X leap, I leap, A leap, R leap, C leap, V leap, all of the <laughs> leaps in general. Did I get them all? Did I miss any? Is there a drone uh... leap? Uh, it, uh, it will <laughs> a D leap. Yep. <laughs> but no, so here's a question. You have been a forensic examiner for a very long time. Um, you are really well known in the community. So you are known as using commercial tools. You use a lot of them. You're very much like I am in that aspect. Why did you see the need to create the leaps? Um, I mean, uh, folks have been doing this in a while. will notice that if you run an extraction from a device, to different tools, you might get different results. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing, right? Uh, you want to compare those results. Some tools will be able to pick more, some less. Some will pick stuff that you haven't realized. And there's times that those tools don't pick anything. <laughs> and, and you know there's something, right? Either because you got some case intelligence, the, 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 st the stakeholder, the agent told you, whatever it is. So I'm thinking, how could I streamline getting stuff out while the tools catch up? Um, and that's something that we discussed in, in the past, you know, between ourselves. Um, the expectations from 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 users, right? You can't expect a, a third party tool to be like, I'm gonna support all apps in the world. Well, there's millions upon millions of them, right? So there's this gap between what we need and what the data source is, right? And sometimes, you know, the tools are there to bridge that gap, but what happens is the tool's not there yet. Well, it's us, right? We are the ones to bridge that gap. And one way I wanted to do it is uh, uh, with some tooling that's open source. Um, Third-party tools have methods of doing different either custom artifacts, uh, special SQLite queries and all that, but that's not always feasible for what we're trying to accomplish. So something open source will be more freeing and easier to triage, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And I honestly, when you look at the commercial tools, obviously Physical Analyzer wants to parse all the things. If you just need certain things, it's nice to be able to control that at times and have rapid response and analysis, which I think is really needed. Oh no, the, the, the triage is key. And people tell me, well, I'll just, I just run the tool and, and, and give our reports because I don't have time. Well, I will tell you that doing that actually takes more time. <laughs> yes. when, when, you when you triage stuff, you're able to really focus your attention and your tooling, right? You, I don't have 20 you know, premium dongles or, or PA dongles, right? <laughs> I only have one. <laughs> so I have to be really judicious in how do I use that time? And just sequentially just parsing out reports is not even efficient, right? So if you can triage it with, you know, for example, an open source tool or other tools, and then focus your analysis with the paid tools on something that's of main interest for your case, you're actually going faster. It's like it's like shooting, right? Um, and I know a lot, a lot of enforcement folks here in the might be listening, right? Um, if you go if you go slow, you go smooth, and if you're smooth, you're actually being fast, right? And that's in regards to how you press your trigger as you're training, right? Same thing here. Um, you want to go slow but make it smooth, right? Do that triaging, and then you're actually gonna get that speed enhancement. That's one way. I like that. That's a good analogy. All right, so here's a tough one, and this is something that I think anyone who even blogs has to consider this. But you not only blog, you're releasing a tool that people are going to use could potentially testify to, um, prove right or wrong in a case. So how did you decide to go for it? What made you brave enough to finally take the literal leap? That was good. 
What made you take the leap? <laughs> the leap of faith. Um, well, and, and so there's a couple of things there. Um, the, the first thing, the first one is I wanted to share the tooling because I was getting value out of it. And I thought, look, if I get value out of this, somebody else will get value out of it. So let me let me put it out there. So I started doing some one-off scripts to parse different things, uh, Discord and to parse user stats. There was not a real parser for it. Parse mobile installation logs in iOS. And then I, I one of um, OSDF con I was um, with uh, with Jessica Hyde, which we all know and love. And she said, why do you put them all in one place, right? So, you know, instead of so many one-offs, and I said, okay, that's a good idea. So that's where the leaps came out. And the thing with, with, with tooling is um, the tool doesn't testify, right? the examiner or the analyst, the one that testifies, right? Um, tools will not be perfect. I internalize that even my tooling is not going to be perfect and that's okay, right? The tool, per, the tool's purpose is to focus our, our attention into the things that matter and automate, automate those, right? I have to validate, right? I have to validate even the output of my own tool. <laughs> and you say, well, how, how could that be? You made the tool. Well, the data source could change tomorrow, right? I mean, today it could be a, an X XML file and then like user stats and then tomorrow is a protobuf or or you know binary xml something different right so the, we accept the tools also we have to understand our limitations right and at the end of the day it's not the tool's responsibility it's going to be your responsibility so i'm not afraid of my tool saying that something is wrongly interpreted um because if it matters you you the examiner me the examiner we have to really validate before we put stuff out yeah and i've used your tools and you have been extremely responsive so a good example of that is that Android from 2015, the data that you created the leap in for a leap is different than the data I was seeing. But if I had just trusted it, it would have, one, it didn't work until you fixed it. But remember the local versus UTC, like simple things like that. It requires the person behind the keyboard to make sense Look, of the truth. And, and, and I don't want people come with a wrong impression, right? We do our best efforts, right? We really try to make the tool work properly to interpret properly, right? And this goes with open source stuff and, you know, third parties like Awesome Celebrate tooling, right? So we do our, I mean, we do to make it right. Uh, but we're, I mean, we're not all knowing, right? There will be circumstances. So we have to validate and make sure we're not missing something, which is another big issue um, when we're doing our examinations. And your response time to add support where it's not supported is amazing, by the way. Uh, thank, thanks to the community. <laughs> and, and that's another thing, right? We, we join forces and that's what, that's what makes it work. Like, uh, and I want a quick shout out to Kevin Pagano. He's like my run hand person right now in following stuff that I cannot follow up on. And he's awesome. I love him to pieces. And, and it's, it's a work of love from the community. And that really helps us be a little bit quicker, um, than, you know, uh, professional developers in that sense. <laughs> and that's actually my next question. How did you recruit the people who are working on the leaps with you? How did it all come about? Um, so it's it's trial and error, I guess. And I say that because I'm not, I mean, I'm just a line examiner, right? On the field, just doing phones and computers. Um, and as I started the project, by by doing, I started learning a few things. And and um I, I call it I call it being. Yes, you, you have to be in order for people to kind of help you out, right? Uh, and and leadership is not, hey, Leo, do what I tell you, right? It's look, we're we're having, we're doing this. And come help me out, right? This is good for us. So you have to be approachable, and and I try to be approachable. I try to folks be comfortable with telling me things and 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 working with them, right? Um, you gotta be involved, right? I can't just put the project out and forget about it, because then no, if it's if it's not important to me, it's not gonna be important to anybody else, right? Um, you have to care about the mission. You have to care about what you're doing. Um, and you have to be true, right? It, it's not about money, obviously. I mean, ourselves and the twenty five plus developers that are working on these projects, we have a total amount of zero dollars gain <laughs> from it. <laughs> um, and our code is MIT. Anybody can use it, right? Because this is about the mission, right? We have a, a, a true north and we're, we're true to that. We're true to the, what we're trying to achieve. Um, you got to be present. Um, we hang out where the examiners hang out on Twitter. Now yeah. I see a lot of folks moving to LinkedIn into Discord server. Um, you have to be present. If you're not present, people are not going to help out. You got to be grateful. Um, you gotta give thanks and often, right? To be neither too hot, neither too cold, right? If it's if it's too complex, too abstracted, um, people are not gonna help out. And if your code is too simple, it's not gonna achieve all your purposes. So we try to make the code accessible that people that are beginning in coding in Python or more middle of the road and advanced can also participate. And that's what I call like being. If if you are those things, I think in my experience, you will have some success. Success. It's true. It's very true. 
All right, so let's switch topics completely. So last year, SANS came out with the Difference Makers Award. And I'll, okay, so the Forensic Forecast Awards, I remember it was joked to me for years that I was always the bridesmaid, never the bride, like always, <laughs> like nominated, never winning, always nominated, never winning. And then that changed. Um, for you, you are sadly stuck in a bridesmaid category. I think you truly deserved Investigator of the Year this year, by the way, but that's a separate thing. Let's focus on the SANS Difference Maker Awards. This is a huge thing that was brand new last year and you won. Mm -hmm. So did that surprise you? Like, I know like the forecast gets frustrating and all that. So for you to win that huge award, what was that like for you? Um, uh, the first is that I, I didn't really win the award. The, the, the community won the award, right? The tooling won the award. Um, so, so it wasn't like, like, like me, I, I didn't see it as a, I won. I see it as a more of like, we won, um, because a lot of people put work into this and research into it and, and, and ideas into it. Um, I, I'll be really straight with everybody on the call. Um, I'm not a fan of popularity based awards. I'd be straight up and hopefully nobody gets offended, but then I'm saying that then I'm somebody's gonna get offended. <laughs> I, 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 I like the, the, uh, the difference makers awards because there was a panel that look at the different candidates and projects and mm -hmm. make a technical decision on what's making that difference. And, and, but that's my opinion, right? Nobody, nobody has to share it. And I understand that. Um, it's not, a, it wasn't a popularity if, if people like it or like me or as, as, as a person, right? It's more of a, is this tool actually making a difference? And I, and I believe it does. And I, I the, 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 the award was important to me now because it gave me an, a, an opportunity to tell the developers and people that use it, Hey, look, this is being used. This is important. I got folks that tell me, hey, I use the tools in this different ways and I cannot share it because it might be, you know, case data or involved with a case and I cannot reveal that. But at least I can tell the developer in the community, hey, look, this is for you. It helps. We're proud of it and help us make it better. And, and the award, I think, really helped with, with, with that. I love that you just said we want it. Like you are very humble and it's amazing. But give yourself some credit too, because your brilliant mind took the leap and recruited all these amazing people that you're helping shine spotlight on. If, it's if, fantastic. If, if, if you tell that to my trainee, she'll be like, oh no, he's <laughs> he can barely walk out the door with that big head. <laughs> I, 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 I would say I'm really proud of the work that we, we have done. Uh, extremely proud. It is amazing. And you know what? For the forecast awards this year, and it was part forgetfulness and part how I think it should be. Um, I didn't nominate anyone. I didn't ask anyone at Celebrate to nominate anyone. Just let it naturally happen and see what occurs. But then I was mad because I wanted to nominate you as investigator. So it's, I get it. But yeah, I completely agree. It's nice to have a panel of deciders and voters, almost like the Oscars, where it's, you know, like these are the things. And now this. No, I mean, and, 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 and there will be limitations on both approaches. There might be a third approach that's better. We don't know. I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, as long as the any awards are actually putting out uh, people and tools that are useful, I think it accomplishes purpose. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not super sour about anything. I mean, I, I, I think it's useful either way. Um, yep. But that being said, my preference is, is what it is. <laughs> well, congratulations on that regardless. Regardless. Okay, my... Final real question for you. Is there anything exciting that the community should look forward to this year with the leaps? Well, you you kind of gave a hint already. <laughs> so we're trying to get into the whole drone thing. And it has different challenges, right? Because drones, as some of you might be familiar, you can pull data from chip off from the device. You can pull data from the actual device by connecting it to a computer. You can pull data from the phone itself. Right? So there's many ways. And then that data it's in so many different formats because there's so many different vendors and all that. So it's kind of a challenge. I, I was approached by a few folks, uh, the um, experts, uh, digital experts group at the Interpol to kind of work on that. So we're looking into that. We're getting from some good folks in India that are contributing their free time to help with it. So the the framework is out there, but we don't, we don't have any artifacts yet. So we'll be okay. working working on that soon. So hopefully we have a few drones, um, you know, support for some drones in the in the near future. Fantastic. Drones are definitely a hot topic. All right. Oh, my yeah. final question yeah. for you and everyone's posting in there, by the way, Ryan, Josh Hickman said, saved my bacon at techno security. I have never heard anyone say that in my life. I was saved my bacon. saved my bacon. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what does that mean? What is happening? Like, but apparently you're gonna save you something. Saved, it better be the bacon. It's bacon, delicious. Okay. You saved his bacon <laughs> in some cases. Save the bacon. Insane. <laughs> Okay, if you could do anything in the world and money didn't matter, 
not forensics, not be a police officer, nothing like that, what would you be? I would be a meme farmer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I will farm <laughs> memes for the community. No, um, I, I, it's, it's tough because, you know, we, we don't really, at least I don't really think that far ahead. I'm like, when I'm done with my work now, I'm thinking what well, will be my new work or my new job afterwards, right? But what happens when you're like retire, retire, right? What, what, what will you do, right? I'm a man. I'm a simple man. <laughs> I like to work out, eat, and hang out with family and friends. Honestly, uh, I think the moment I'm done, I'm done. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. So, okay, let's talk about your meme for one one minute here. Um, How in the heck are you create? It, are you so <laughs> like you wake up and you're like, I'm going to create these five crazy memes today because they are so entertaining and they hit home. <laughs> They're amazing. Uh, see, I, I think it's more of a, I try to be aware during my day and then things happen like for all of us, if things happen during the day and, it, and instead of just kind of just, okay, this happened and then move on, I try, I, I try to remember, right? And then when I get home, I, 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 uh, I look at templates and try to put that experience in templates. Uh, memes, I think memes to be successful, that's my opinion as well. Um, they have to reflect things that happened or experiences that we share. Um, in whatever you're trying to address. So I, I go with things that happen to me, that examiners tell me that I that I think are funny or relatable. And and then I put them out there. Um, if, if you're trying to make memes to make a point, that's not going to work, right? The yeah. meme comes first and then po the point comes later. <laughs> um, what's the reality of the work that, that, that we do? And uh, I, I'll, be, I'll also be straight with everybody. I like that. It really kind of calms me. Like sometimes I'm frustrated and I do a meme and I feel better about it. <laughs> so Good for you. it's like a self, self therapy, I guess. <laughs> Good for and, you. Uh, well, we all enjoy them. Thank you. We all enjoy them. Alex, thank you for being on the show. This was fantastic. I'm sure I will recruit you back like I did in control Alt delete many times. So if you enjoyed this, um, thank you for all the comments for those who are live. Uh, a few things. Next month, we have Edward Growski with Jared Barnhart on the show. This is always going to be the third Tuesday of the month at 1130 Eastern. And remember, the whole theme of this show is what you are looking for may not be on the surface. Sometimes you have to dig for it. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for having me. It was great.